Welcome to this lecture number 20. Uh, this is uh, the lecture in which we are the, the following topics will be covered. That is, we will start with uh, this induced recharge, which is uh, basically a spillover from the previous uh, lecture, and we will move on to wastewater recharge for reuse and followed by water spreading. So, now we will uh, go to the first topic of this lecture that is uh, induced recharge. So, basically this induced recharge is a recharge which has been induced artificially due to uh, creating a difference in the water level. So, unlike in most of the water the artificial uh, uh, ground water recharge schemes, wherein the ground water is uh, uh, the surface water is transported uh, near to the um, well or uh, other uh, subsurface storage facility thereby the water is made to uh, infiltrate the surface water is made to in infiltrate and get stored in the, the subsurface uh, storage uh, facilities. And here the same thing the purpose is the same, but this recharge is induced by say lowering of the water table. So, thereby a head is created and uh, this uh, creation of head will induce the, the hydraulic gradient and thereby the artificial ground water recharge. So, here so I can uh, if you write this one the meaning of uh, this induced recharge we can write that it is the recharge induced artificially by creating a head difference by lowering the water table, water table stroke piezometric surface and thereby creating a hydraulic gradient. which will induce the recharge into the subsurface storage facilities. So, unlike the, the common the commonly employed uh, artificial groundwater water 
so which you have been abbreviated in abbreviating as AGWR schemes so there is no physically physical transport of the surface water in the vicinity of of a subsurface storage facility. So this is the major difference between the induced recharge and the artificially artificial groundwater recharge. So here it is induced because of the head difference. So this head difference is a major cause which uh, results in the establishment of a hydraulic gradient which will induce the recharge into the this one. And, uh, now we will see some of the typical uh, induced uh, schematic diagrams of uh, typical induced recharge schemes and uh, so typical schematic diagrams of uh, induced recharge schemes. So firstly let us see there is a suppose this is a the ground surface and uh, here let us say this is a so this is a river and uh, here So this is the water surface in the S1 and uh, so here uh, let us say this is the water surface and uh, in this case say that is uh, say the, the river water surface is uh, lower than the water table maybe due to say excessive uh, pumping of water from the so this is the water table so this is river and because of this uh, lower uh, water level in the in the river so what happens is so the the water is uh, the ground water enters the river through bed as well as banks so basically here you can uh, note down so this is a uh, just uh, to write a so the river having water level lower than the the water table so 
So, this uh, river having a water level lower than the water table will establish a hydraulic gradient and the, that hydraulic gradient brings about the induced uh, recharge into this one. And uh, so, that is the this one and uh, so, the next So, next we will, uh, so here you can say, so this next we will uh, and here in this one say let us uh, say suppose in this vicinity of this uh, this is the ground level and uh, so and uh, here just in the vicinity of the river So, there is a well and so this is a pumping well and uh, this pumping well so is uh, here you can say this is the scree the screen or the slotted casing and uh, because of the screen And this is the the water table or the water surface in the river in the river, and then so it is uh, so this is the original water table, and here what happens is. While on the other side there is a recharge and here what happens is, so the because of the pumping of water through the well and uh, so, So, uh, here you can say, so this is uh, A that is uh, natural flow pattern which is this uh, top figure and B is the flow pattern with a pumping well. So, here what happens is had the, when the pumping well is not there, so then so everywhere, so through this uh, uh, bed as well as banks, so there is a recharge into the river and uh, whereas, this when the pumping well is uh, drilled in the vicinity of the river, so what happens is the uh, the water the surf water surface in the pumping well is, much, is uh, slightly much below the water surface in the river. So, therefore, what happens is towards the well so, the flow gets reversed. So, initially it was uh, the flow was uh, uh, into the river. So, on both sides that is on the left side as well as the right side. So, now after the uh, pumping well has been drilled. So, what happens is uh, towards the pumping well. So, the flow is 
from the river into the well whereas away from the pumping well the flow is into the river. So therefore this is uh, an example of this uh, this is a typical schematic diagram uh, for uh, this induced recharge scheme I am sorry so this is uh, just a scheme and uh, now we will uh, see little bit about uh, Of course, so here what happens is, so the so this is an uh, typical example, and uh, so there could be various other reasons wherein there is a, an establishment of a hydraulic gradient, and then so because of this establishment of the creation of hydraulic gradient, so the recharge uh, that is uh, the induced recharge starts. So uh, this we will go to the uh, next topic that is on uh, the wastewater recharge for reuse. So here this is a so with the awareness in the about the water use efficiency so this uh, there have been many schemes which have come up in the uh, recent past wherein the wastewater is used for uh, various uh, wastewater is reused for various purposes and uh, through this recharge. So basically here we can uh, say so it is a method of uh, reusing wastewater. through recharge for uh, purposes like irrigation to overland flow recharge well so these are some of the purposes so wherein so this uh, waste water is uh, reused and uh, here so this is uh, the waste water irrigation So this is a uh, quite common, and uh, here, so uh, 
So, let me just uh, so first let us consider that is the land application of uh, uh, waste water uh, land application of uh, waste water for reuse uh, through irrigation. So, that is uh, waste water reuse through recharge for irrigation. So, here so suppose this is the so these are the plants which need irrigation and uh, say this is the these are the, the root zone of the plants and uh, this is the the general ground level with some uh, slope here and uh, so here uh, so so this is the root zone so these are all the crop and uh, so here through this So, this is evapotranspiration and uh, so this is uh, so this uh, waste water is uh, So, waste water is uh, reused for irrigation either by that is uh, spraying So, which has been indicated by this kinds of arrow or by surface application. So, this surface application has been indicated by so this kinds of error. So, by employing any of these methods either spraying from the top or by surface application. So, we can uh, reuse the waste water and thereby uh, reduce the water demand and uh, on irrigation because we all know that this irrigation requires the highest amount of uh, uh, water this is uh, highest water requirement is for irrigation. So, by using this uh, waste water reusing this waste water we are uh, slightly minimizing the water requirement for irrigation 
and here what happens is whether we use whether we employ the uh, that is spraying or the uh, surface spreading of this uh, waste water. So, it will uh, uh, infiltrate into the root zone of the of the crop and thereby so it will provide the necessary irrigation for the plants uh, uh, for the which form the crop and thereby so this so we make use so we uh, rather uh, we take care of two problems one is we will reduce the uh, the load on the uh, the of waste water in the sewerage system or waste water system and then secondly we will also reduce the irrigation water requirement of uh, crops and uh, so in doing this we make use of the uh, uh, that is uh, the storage which we can create in the root zone of the plants which form the crop and uh, so next we will go to that is uh, the waste water waste water reuse through overland flow so here So, in this case suppose there is a more sloping ground say this is a ground level slope uh, greater than 2 percent and, uh, and less than say 4 percent or so. So, that is say slope of 2 to 4 percent and here say suppose the uh, this one. So, there are uh, the various, various uh, say crops are there. So, here what to do is, so there is a percolation, so there is a so this waste water is uh, is sprayed through a sprinkler. So, this is a uh, sprinkler for uh, spraying waste water and thereby so here sheet flow or overland flow is uh, created so this is a uh, obviously so these are the So, this is the so this is the sheet flow that is overland flow. And uh, of course, there is also some percolation of uh,
So, this is a percolation and uh, in this case so here this so you may also collect this. Uh, so, this is uh, for runoff collection. So, like this so, this waste water can be reused in sloping lands. So, thereby uh, what happens is by uh, either uh, applying generally through this one and of course, so here we can also show. So, this is a, so this is evapotranspiration. So, this is E T. So, this is a second method of uh, waste water reuse and of course, in this case also. So, what happens is, so once the waste water is, uh, this is uh, generally uh, here you can uh, generally sprinkler is adopted for spraying waste water. So, in uh, sloping lands, so suppose so we uh, employ this uh, sprinkler for uh, spraying the waste water. So, then what happens is and the larger this one is uh, waste water is created and then so part of it percolates and part of it uh, a small very small portion or uh, some portion may also uh, flow as a sheet flow and thereby. So, the waste water is uh, recharged and the same in the previously whatever was uh, happening in case of irrigation. That means, reduction in the water demand for irrigation as well as reduction in the uh, load on the sewerage system. So, both purposes are uh, achieved simultaneously and that is uh, this one and then third is that is uh, say this is the waste water reuse through recharge wells. So, in this case what happens is waste water is allowed to recharge wherein there are a number of filtering layers to screen as many pollutants from the waste water as possible. So, so therefore, it is uh, substantially filtered waste water is allowed to get stored in a recharge well. So, here we can uh,
a typical diagram that can show say suppose this is a say suppose this is a recharge well and of course here I am showing this as a an open well and uh, so this is the waste water and uh, so typically so different kinds of uh, so this filter beds are uh, employed and uh, so here we can maybe another and in this case so this is the recharge well i'm sorry so this is the this is the ground level so this is the waste water and uh, so this waste water gets uh, filtered through this uh, so these are the series of filter beds to substantially remove uh, the most of the pollutants in the uh, this uh, in this waste water and then eventually what happens is so this is uh, so the waste water is uh, is allowed to recharge into this recharge well. So like this we can uh, ensure that this uh, waste water is actually because what happens is generally this waste water flow is a very regular flow because of uh, the uh, municipal uh, uh, water use which is obviously the all human beings do need water on a regular basis irrespective of the season for uh, uh, carrying out the uh, daily activities. So therefore waste water is generated and if this waste water is uh, properly filtered and then allowed to recharge into a recharge well so then uh, of course uh, and again so it will provide a constant supply of uh, water for the recharge well and then again so it can further be purified and then uh, in many cases it has been brought to the level of uh, uh, this uh, even portable standards also of course if there is a, an attitude problem is there and if uh, this attitude problem is also over uh, this uh, taken care of so then this uh, waste water this treated waste water so it can be used uh, significantly to meet the water requirements and uh, so now we will go to the other uh, this one that is uh, this water spreading the last topic of uh, today's lecture is on uh, water spreading So in this here what is done is so this waste water is allowed to spread and uh, waste 
waste water after successive filtration layers of filtration is allowed to spread on the surface wherein it eventually gets infiltrated thereby bringing about artificial groundwater recharge. It is AGWR. So, this is water spreading, even though it is the we call it water spreading. So, it can be either uh, waste water or, uh, or even say that is uh, rain water. waste water here and let me write this as our rain water. So, after successive layers of filtration is allowed to spread on the surface and thereby, so it is uh, uh, this uh, artificial ground water recharge is uh, achieved. So, this is uh, regarding the uh, this one and uh, obviously, so, this is but only thing is so the precaution to be taken. So, precaution needs to be taken to prevent this uh, mosquitoes and other vectors from breeding. So, it is a very important uh, this one, so that uh, precaution has to be taken, so that, so this uh, uh, water spreading does not increase or uh, does not uh, create the new menace of uh, vector or mosquitoes and uh, thereby it is. Uh, it will cause more problems. And uh, so, we will also that is, uh, so with this we will uh, come to the end of uh, this chapter on artificial groundwater recharge. And of course, so this artificial groundwater recharge is a very uh, uh, this one that uh, it is uh, especially in the uh, scenario of climate change. So, this artificial ground water recharge is a very uh, uh, necessary these days and as we all uh, I would like to take this opportunity to bring it to the notice that uh, the human uh, dependence on water of course this was uh, de this was dealt in one of the earlier uh, lectures water so it starts with rain water then moves on to
river water and then so this is a so rain water so then this is a river water and then moves on to so this is a ground water then moves on to ground water so therefore so here so this artificial this ground water recharge schemes so what they do is uh, and here uh, this is uh, either through rain water so the water is allowed to uh, filter and uh, that is infiltrate and thereby create a thereby fill the subsurface reservoirs and uh, so so this is a artificial ground water recharge brings about the necessary water security which is very important which is very important especially in the context of climate change wherein the frequency of uh, floods and droughts is uh, significantly increasing in uh, most of the places on earth as well as there is a gradual decrease in the number of rainy days at a place in many locations so this these rainy days so here uh, a rainy day is a day with a minimum daily precipitation of 2.5 mm so this is the this one and uh, of course so this uh, so the so to design this uh, any artificial groundwater recharge schemes so various factors such as the uh, the the amount of uh, rainfall as well as the the infiltration as well as the the desired uh, water table depth the range of water table depths so all these factors need to be considered and uh, so uh, how much uh, this one and of course uh, here i would uh, you'd also uh, this bring about uh, bring to the notice of uh, one uh, uh, very effective technique which is uh, uh, which can recharge the uh, that is the unconfined aquifer at the top as well as the confined aquifer at the bottom and so that I would like to uh, mention here so this is it is known as the relief well so basically 
So, this relief fill is a facility that is a well having screens along uh, all the aquifers. It is a facility wherein so this artificial groundwater recharge for uh, all the aquifers is uh, achieved in stages. starting from the lowest aquifer through through successive filtration of uh, rain water. So, here I would like to bring about uh, this one. So, a relief well is a ok. So, basically here, uh, so this relief well is uh, something like this. So, here uh, if this is the so just let me consider uh, and here So, there is a, a filter bed and uh, so here uh, so here the water enters. and thereby and afterwards. So, this is the impervious layer. So, this is the unconfined aquifer So, this is confined aquifer 1 and this is confined aquifer 2 and so on and uh, here so wherever this uh, uh, this is there so the so there is a strainer with uh, perforations so here what happens is so once the water enters through the this one so next the flow is into these uh, aquifers Similarly, here also the flow is into the aquifers. So, this is also a very important uh, facility for uh, relief fill and then here. So, this is the 
graded filter bed. So, with this uh, we will come to the end of this chapter and uh, uh, so uh, this uh, um, completes uh, 4 modules and the remaining 4 modules will be uh, dealt by my colleague Professor Anirban Thar. Thank you.